good morning. Uh, today is Saturday. Saturday the 2nd. And we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. All right. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a burial, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him on either side one and Jesus in the midst. Joseph Smith translation of John 19, 17 through 18. Crucifixion was a hideous and igno ignominious death. An evidence of the art of torture perfected by the Romans. It was also a method of execution to which the outcasts of Jewish society were consigned. For ancient law decreed, if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and thou hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain all night upon the tree. But thou shalt in any wise bury him that day, that thy land be not defiled. Thus the sinless son of man, he who had always conducted his life with dignity, was forced to endure the indignity of the lowest form of execution in dying between two thieves and making his grave with the wicked. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich." Okay. So, today is 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and this was actually a really good chapter. I understood it. I got the, the, the gist of it. In it, uh, the Holy Ghost reveals that Jesus is the Christ. Spiritual gifts are present among the saints. Apostles, prophets, and miracles are found in the true church. Um... What am I trying to say? There was one in here, verse 3. I almost chose this for my statement, but I chose a different one. Verse 3, Wherefore I give unto you under, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Um, this, to me, was just like, what am I trying to say? Anybody who who uh, says that Jesus wasn't the Christ or that he wasn't even real or religion is all just made up and blah, 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 steer clear of those people. Don't listen to them. They clearly, clearly don't have the Spirit of God. They clearly are so far from the Holy Spirit that they're closer to Satan, and you just need to steer clear of them. Also, anybody who confesses that Jesus is the Christ is close to the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you can you can rely on them to be truthful. You can rely on them to, to associate with, I guess is kind of what I'm saying, whether that be in person or on YouTube. Um, and then it goes into spiritual gifts, and then it goes into the body saying, the hand is not the foot. Uh, or the foot says, I'm not the hand, therefore I'm not part of the body. Speaking of the body of the church, I mean, like, every piece has its purpose. The foot has its purpose. The armpit has its purpose. The fingernails have their purpose. And just because you're the fingernails doesn't mean that you're le yet less useful than the hand. Um, so I liked that part of the... the the chapter and then it goes uh, a little bit more into spiritual gifts um, again saying not all are teachers and not all can work miracles and not all have the gift of healing and not all can speak with tongues and not all can interpret tongues but here's the one I chose for my personal statement or I took I did questions today but covet covet earnestly the best gifts and yet show I unto you a more excellent way and with that, I just said, uh, what do I covet? Am I coveting the best gifts or am I going, well, I'm the foot, therefore I'm not really part of the body. Uh, I wish I was the hand. And then I also said, am I truly searching for a more excellent way? So that's, 
that's my my thing today. Um, I believe we have Jeffrey. I believe, indeed, we do. Okay. Obviously, part of the meaning of being a member of the Lord's Church is in that choice of language itself. Coined originally by the Apostle Paul, who knew so much about coming to Christ and making the covenants we all make at baptism. And then he quotes uh, verses 12, 14, 21, and 27. It is an immensely satisfying thing to be needed in the body of Christ, and everyone is needed. Whether we function as an eye or an arm is irre irrelevant. The fact is we are needed in this most majestic structure and the body is imperfect without us. In the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the restored ecclesiastical body of Christ, people need people and everyone is welcomed. This includes, in Paul's assertion, not only the attractive, talented, comely members, but those of us who seem to be seem to have fewer gifts and face greater challenges, those who receive less honor and attention, every member matters, and all are invited to serve, even as they are served by others. We speak often of the work of the Lord and a labor of love. There is much to be done in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints to secure our happiness, guarantee our spiritual safety, and eventually usher in the Millennial Day. Everyone is needed and all can contribute in wonderful ways. Latter-day Saints love and welcome and reach out to young and old in a way that Christians are commanded to do. Indeed, there are no more strangers and foreigners in the household of God, for we have been commanded to meet together oft, to fast and to pray, and to speak one with another concerning the welfare of our souls. This is something more than boys club or civic association or political affiliations offer worthy as those may be it is more than house parties and welcome wagons provided as kind as such expressions are this fellowship is ultimately of the spirit and comes because christ is our eternal head contrast the physic the psychic turbulence experienced by so many in a wicked world with the serenity Yep. With the serenity my wife and I saw while standing with our childhood playmates as they laid their firstborn child in a grave, this beautiful little 13-year-old girl, born just 90 days after our own first child, had fallen victim to Cocaine Kanye Cocaine syndrome a half dozen years earlier. There is no way to adequately describe the deterioration of that little body, nor is there any way to tell the patient to tell the patience and pain of those parents as they carried legs that could not walk and finally fed with an eyedropper a mouth that could not swallow. But there was no existential anguish rending the air, standing quietly, no, peacefully, at the casket with this little family, now temporarily lessened by Patty's leaving, were her young women's class, her Sunday school teachers, and a favorite teenage home teacher. There also were with two... There also were the two with whom her father had served in the bishopric. Her mother's Relief Society association, associates dried their tears and slipped away to prepare the family luncheon. Fellow members in the body of Christ remembering and whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. That hopeful, trusting, facing, that hopeful, trusting, facing of the future is part of what it means to be a Latter-day Saint. It is part of knowing the divine relation, the answer, even in our childhood, to life's great, greatest questions. If I could have read that last part a little bit more smoothly, 
I'm sorry, for some reason my eyes did not want to focus and everything seemed choppy to me. I apologize. Um, anyways, I'll leave you now with a prayer from a diary. Prayer. I don't know. Maybe I need more sleep. I'm looking at my eyes. They're not drunk, I swear. Okay. Today is the second, and this prayer is Nestorian Liturgy. Worthy of praise from every mouth, of confession from every tongue, of worship from every creature, is thy glorious name, O Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, who didst create the world in thy grace, and by thy compassion didst save the world. To thy majesty, O God, ten thousand times ten thousand bow down and adore, singing and praising without ceasing, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy praises. Hosanna in the highest. Sure, I could read that perfectly. Okay, that was 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and tomorrow we do 13. We will see you then. Bye.